Ladies and gentlemen, the Joseph Schlitz Brewing Company of Milwaukee, Wisconsin presents The Halls of Ivy, starring Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman. <laughs> I was curious. I tasted it. Now I know why Schlitz is the largest selling beer in America. No wonder it's the beer that made Milwaukee famous. If you like good beer, you'll find it pays to be curious and learn about Schlitz for yourself. And now, the Halls of Ivy. again to Ivy. Ivy College, that is, in the town of Ivy, USA. It's an old American custom when an individual achieves uh, preeminence in any particular field to ascribe to him a wisdom and clairvoyance embracing the entire field of human activity. Thus, a millionaire bobby pin manufacturer becomes the authority on Soviet expansion in the Near East, and a ranking first baseman is automatically raised to the top level of experts on agrarian economy. But the perennial target for the opinion seekers is a college president. Comes a dull day in the editorial room, and he's the publisher's personal pigeon. So, at the home of Dr. William Todd Hunter Hall, president of Ivy College, and his wife, the former Victoria Cromwell of the London stage, we find a reporter from the Ivy News, Mr. Crane, whose 34th question is... Do you consider soil erosion a serious threat to our national prosperity, Dr. Hall? I haven't the slightest idea, Mr. Crane. I've read two books which say it is, and one book and three articles which say it is nonsense. In this matter, you may put me down as a confused neutral. That's about 20 times I've had to put you in the no opinion column, Doc. It's refreshing to meet somebody who's too wise to be too smart. Oh, I'm not trying to parade any particular wisdom, Mr. Crane. But there are a few subjects on which I am not a qualified expert. That's what I mean. It's refreshing. You'd be surprised at the buttonheads I interview who know everything about everything. Now then, who do you figure to cop the pennant this year? Uh, uh, Victoria, who do you think will um, cop the pennant this year? The White Sox. The Chicago White Sox? Uh, For your information, Mr. Crane, my wife has never made a wrong World Series prediction. Never? Holy cow! The White Sox. But this is right from the dream book. Wait till I throw that out of the sports desk. Well, I can get 500 to one it. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> I, uh, I got just one last question, Doctor. I'm glad to hear that. How about Mrs. Whitney's statue? Is the school going to accept it? Statue? I don't know anything about any statue, Mr. Crane. You mean for publication. But, uh, how about off the record? Oh, I'll know her off. I know Mrs. Whitney by reputation, but... Otherwise, your question is meaningless. Okay, Doctor. I've seen some of her stuff, and I don't blame you for playing it close to your chest. Well, thanks a lot, and thank you, Mrs. Hall. Are you sure about the White Sox? As my husband told you, Mr. Crane, I've never been wrong on a baseball prediction. Ever since I um, went to... <clears throat> I'm, I'm afraid we're delaying, Mr. Crane, my dear. Uh, good day, Mr. Crane. Bye, and thanks a lot. Imagine, the White Sox. <laughs> Toddy. Yes? The White Sox is a baseball team, isn't it? It is. <laughs> oh, good. I was so worried it might be a polo team or hockey or something. Uh, how was my prediction, remembering that I have never been wrong and also that it was my first? <laughs> it was fantastic, my darling. <laughs> if you are wrong, well, any baseball prophet is entitled to one error. And if you are right... You have a television future which will be worth upward of half a million next year. <laughs> <laughs> and a certain Mr. Red Barber will go on a diet of scorecards and mint stumpire. <laughs> that, however, is... Oh! Uh, why, Vicky, what is it? My goodness. I just remembered Mrs. Whitney. Well, what about her? She sent you a note yesterday afternoon and I completely forgot about it. So sorry. I knew I'd heard the name when that reported Oh, no, it. don't worry. It may not be important. Where is the note? I left it in my desk. Uh, 
Yes, Mr. Toddy. Yeah. Well, this, this may explain what, what Crane was... Oh, listen to this. Dear Dr. Hall, being numbered as I am among Ivy's college's affectionate and grateful alumni, I am quite familiar with the governing board's anxiety to acquire sufficient funds to construct the new gymnasium. The new gym? I have just completed a heroic piece of sculpture called Brutal Truth, designed to adorn the terrace of the new gymnasium. This I am presenting to Ivy College with the necessary funds to complete the building. Oh, how wonderful! My, my check will be presented immediately upon the board's approval and acceptance. And, of course, your own. Won't you and Mrs. Hall call on me as soon as possible? Sincerely yours, Genevieve Whitney. Oh, Cardi, aren't you excited? Yes, yes, I am, yes. <laughs> Quite excited. Well, I must say you're controlling it very successfully. Oh, Vicky, oh, Vicky, my dear, when one has spent as many years as I wheedling money out of alumni and hardly a dollar of it without a string attached, one acquires a sort of psychic caution. In this case, have you ever seen a Whitney sculpture? No, not unless that monstrosity in the garden of the city museum is one of hers. <laughs> the one that looks like a grain elevator struck twice by lightning. <laughs> now, that is a Whitney. No. Yes. But, Charlie, no American woman could have done that. It must have been done by some gigantic Hungarian or Czech with a beard down to here. And a... Oh, no. Yes, I agree. Her work always seems more in the nature of some great uh, geographical upheaval. But I'll get it. Uh, Dr. Hall's resident. Dr. Hall, this is Merriweather. Oh, yes, Mr. Merriweather. It's always nice to hear from you. Oh, well, this is Charles Merriweather, Doctor, not John. Oh. My brother had to go away. He asked me to call and tell you that you're expected at Mrs. Whitney's house today for tea. Today? Yeah, yeah four o'clock. You, Mrs. Hall, Wellman, and myself. I'm standing in for my brother. We're twins, you know. Nobody can tell us apart anyway. Well, I didn't realize it was so urgent. Well, you know Wellman. All prospective endowments are urgent to him. The way he reaches out for that next donation, you'd think this college was in danger of becoming a parking lot next Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> in that case, I suppose our presence is indicated. We'll see you there. Uh, fine, Doctor. Goodbye. Goodbye. Something about Mrs. Whitney? Tea. Four o'clock at her house. You and I, Mr. Merriweather's brother and Mr. Wellman. Well, where's Mr. Merriweather? Oh, he's out of town. Mm -hmm. And as you know, he and his brother Charles are identical in more than look. They think alike, too. They both hate Wellman. <laughs> <laughs> it's obviously a command performance. We'll have to go. Yes, and after a little conversational badminton, we will be expected to approve the sculpture which is to adorn the new gymnasium. Mm. And I suppose not approving it is to lose out on the money to build the gym. My darling, you have a natural gift for stating a problem with simplicity and accuracy. <laughs> but in this case, Mr. Wellman is the real problem. Oh, I know. To get that new gymnasium, he'd approve of anything, wouldn't he? How about Mr. Merriweather? Well, if any Merriweather approves of something, it's because he likes it. He'd vote thumbs down on the Mona Lisa if he really felt that way. <laughs> but, but Mr. Wellman... Yes, Mr. Wellman... Somehow I can't see him as a disinterested art patron, Toddy. Uh, the new gymnasium is to Mr. Wellman what the Golden Fleece was to Jason. <laughs> it's his mission in life. And neither snow nor sleet nor gloom of night. Mm, somebody at the door, dear. And I think in the nick of time, too, you were just about to gum up a good quotation. Uh, hedged about by critics today. Art critics to the right, literary critics to the left, <laughs> volleyed and thundered. Please answer the door, Mrs. Fadiman. <laughs> Neither rain, nor hail, nor sleep. Hmm. Neither storm, nor sleep, nor gloom of night shall stay this courier from his point. Neither wind, nor storm. <laughs> oh, William, it's Mr. Wellman. 
Ah, good day, Mr. Wellman. Doctor? Won't you sit down? No, thank you, Mrs. Hall. Can't stay for the moment. Wanted to speak to you about Mrs. Whitney's offer to complete the new gymnasium. Yes, I presume that was it, Mr. Wellman. Well? Well, what? I just wanted to be sure you're going to be reasonable about it, that's all. After all, if we all agree that I mean it, it's better to have an understanding beforehand, so... Well, the Board of Governors wants this donation, Dr. Hall. At any price? I do not see that the acceptance of a very valuable piece of sculpture by a world-famous artist is any great price to pay, Mrs. Hall. Well, do we understand each other, Doctor? If we do, it'll be for the first time. <laughs> I don't think we do. Do you mean, sir, that you are unwilling to make a very small compromise in a matter so important to this college as a new gymnasium when... Uh, Mr. Wellman... Yes. If I make any compromises, it will be after I have seen Mrs. Whitney's work. I'll definitely not commit myself to you, nor to anyone, until I... By the way, have you seen this statue? Yes. I, uh... Yes, I have. <laughs> what is your frank opinion of it? My frank opinion, as you call it, Mrs. Hall, is that the artistic appraisals of Dr. Hall, and Mr. Merriweather, and myself are not half as important to this college as the acquisition of a new gymnasium. The money to build it is far more important to me than any uh, decorations that may come with it. And I think I reflect the opinion of the majority of the board. I'm sorry, Mr. Wellman, but I can't give you a blanket endorsement, sight unseen. Yes, well, but I warn you, Dr. Hall, if we lose this donation because of your... Uh, your... Integrity? I think I think he meant my stubbornness, Victoria. I take it, Mr. Wellman, this is a warning to go along with the majority vote, if you can arrange one. The board wants this gymnasium, that's all. Good day, Mrs. Hall. Doctor. I can find my way out. Thank you. Well, here we go again. Why don't you and Mr. Wellman just meet each other behind the library some morning? You know, pistols for two and breakfast for one, that sort of thing. <laughs> no, no, I'm just beginning to enjoy these little encounters. I find that Mr. Wellman's bark is a great deal worse than his bite. That's simply a lovely reference, Potty. Simply lovely. Uh, well, what reference? To Mr. Well Mr. Wellman's barking and biting. Because my opinion of his ancestry is also... Oh, Vicky, Vicky, please, please. I was curious. I tasted it. Now I know why Schlitz is the largest selling beer in America. No wonder it's the beer that made Milwaukee famous. Before we return to Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman in the halls of Ivy, here's a banker to tell you in his own words how his curiosity led him to fall into a rose bush and make a new friend. Who's who says I'm a banker? But you'd never know it on weekends. Then I put on my oldest clothes and work in my flower garden. Recently, I discovered that my new neighbor had a similar hobby, except that he added a special touch to his amateur gardening. After he'd putted around for a while, his wife would bring out a tray, and he'd sit down to a comfortable wicker chair. Then he'd pour himself a glass of beer, and as he sipped, you could see a happy look of satisfaction play over his face. This look told me I was missing something, and I decided to find out what that something was. I didn't feel I knew my new neighbor well enough to ask questions, but I've always said where there's a will, there's a way. My way was to work over to a rose bush near my neighbor's yard. There I pretended to be hard at work with the pruning shears while I tried to find out what beer he was drinking. I had just made out the name Schlitz on the label when suddenly I lost my balance and sprawled painfully into the rose bush. The yelp I let out brought my neighbor on the run. But fortunately, nothing was seriously damaged but my dignity. This was quickly repaired when my neighbor invited me to sample the beer I'd been so curious about. I drank and found out why Schlitz had won itself such a large following. Now, almost every day after work, you see the two of us, sometimes in his garden, sometimes in mine, with bottles of Schlitz beside us. The looks of satisfaction on our faces tell the story. No wonder Schlitz is the largest-selling beer in America. 
No wonder it's the beer that made Milwaukee famous. preparing to attend a tea at the studio of Mrs. Genevieve Whitney, the eminent sculptress. Mrs. Hall says... You look very handsome in your blue suit, Toddy. Thank you. How about me? Lovely. You didn't even look. I didn't have to. You're <laughs> always lovely. You have an instinct for clothes. Without that slight flamboyance one usually associates with the theater. Well, there are two sides to every footlight, Toddy. But Hamley doesn't have to wear his tights going home on the subway. No, and I suppose Carmen can take the rose out of her teeth long enough to have a sandwich at the drugstore. <laughs> you know, Vicky, I'm a little worried about Mrs. Whitney's statue. We do need a new gymnasium. I know. But I love this college, particularly its physical aspects. The architecture of this campus is a great part of its charm. I think it has a direct relationship to the affection that students hold for Ivy. And I will not approve anything which is not in harmony. Gymnasium or no gymnasium. Board of governors or no board of governors. Good. Well, I'm on your side, Doctor. We won't accept anything we don't like, even if they blacked on us. Blackjack is the word, Victoria. <laughs> oh, well, I just met the word. I didn't like to be too intimate with it. Vicky, <laughs> <laughs> you're a very soothing person. <laughs> England's loss was certainly America's profit. Mm. Would you like to go back? A visit. Oh, I'd love it. Wouldn't you like it, too? <laughs> See again all the places we went together? Yeah, sentimental uh, uh, sabbatical. I would indeed, Victoria. The Lake District, Covent Garden, Chelsea, Pudding Lane. And Hyde Park Corner and the Cotswolds and the Plum Blossoms and the Vale of Eversham. And the Tower. Ah, the Tower. Do you remember the midnight we spent at the Tower of London? After we walked from Southwark Cathedral across the Thames to Billingsgate Market. And watched the ceremony of the keys. Oh, it was a lovely evening. I'd never seen it before, you know. Well, you know, I'm deeply mortified. But I should be telling you all about our customs and traditions. Oh, not necessarily, Victoria. I know Chicagoans who have never seen those stockyards. New Yorkers who have seen the Statue of Liberty only on postcards. And men from Texas who have never... No, no, I'm wrong there. Texans are rightfully proud of and thoroughly acquainted with everything that is there. <laughs> they are the most... Oh, look, look. Look, Victoria, the tower. What's the matter? Are you too warm, William? No, darling. I, I was just uncovering in deference to my sense of history. Under this moon, this time of night... It's a little overwhelming. Even to an American? Oh, possibly even more so, my dear. You've seen it so many times. But coming to it like this, I can almost see the ghostly form of William the Conqueror supervising its construction. The moat filled again after a hundred years. An imprisoned Sir Walter writing his history of the world. And Edward the Fourth, little prince, is dying in the bloody tower. By the order of Richard the Usurper. Oh, William, you have boned up on it. You did it to embarrass me. No, 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 Victoria, I didn't. Just because I've always had a tremendous interest in the... the... Look. The man with the lantern. It's the yeoman porter with his keys and the guard. Oh! Who comes there? The keys. Whose keys? King George's keys. Advance King George's keys. All well. Guard and escort. Present off. Guard, serve the king. Amen. I was just thinking. This ceremony has been observed every night since the Middle Ages. I almost feel a sense of impertinence at the thought of taking you away from all this beauty, all this history and tradition. Oh, you're not taking me away, William, dear. I'm following you. And much as I love it, 
This country can survive my departure, I think. It lives through worse crises than this. I know, my dear, but I... <laughs> Excuse me, Toddy, but we're due at Mrs. Whitney's in 20 minutes. Mrs. Whitney was the sculptress, but what's she doing in England? No, she, no, she no, no, Toddy, what? you're in Ivy. Well, we're invited for tea. Well, at this time of night, I'll have to have Toddy, it. Toddy, darling, come well, back. Dear, what are you, where do you do? Oh, 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 oh. yes, yes. Shouldn't we be leaving for Mrs. Whitney's? Aren't we about due there? Yes, William, we are. I was trying to tell you, but you were thinking about something else. What was it? The Tower of London. The ceremony of the keys. You and I. How on earth did we ever get back there again? Oh, oh, it wasn't difficult, my sweet. The memories I have of being places with you constitute a passport to revisit them at any time. And a most enjoyable way to travel it is, too. Halls International Airways. Safe takeoffs and happy landings. <laughs> and so cheap. Get your hat, stewardess. Okay, Skipper. More tea, Mrs. Hall. Doctor? No, thank you. No, thank you, Mrs. Whitney. Mr. Wellman? Mr. Merriweather? Thank you, no. Couldn't absorb another drop, ma'am. Thank you. Besides, I'd like to put this teacup down. A hand like mine that was designed to hold a miner's pick, a competitor's throat, and a golf bag, uh, in the order named, isn't very safe for one of these eggshells. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were handling it very sweetly, Mr. Merriweather. <laughs> so did I. In fact, for an ex-miner, your social graces are quite remarkable. <laughs> well, I worked hard at it, Doctor. Made a million dollars so I could have some decent clothes and then discovered that a millionaire can get away with wearing anything. <laughs> By that time, I was so used to wearing a coat and necktie, it was too late. <laughs> well, how about you, Mr. Wellman? Or were you born to the purple? No, indeed. I'm a self-made man. Decent of you to take the blame for it, Clarence. <laughs> <laughs> this is all very well, Merriweather, but the purpose for which we are here... Oh, of is... course, of course, I'm sorry. Mr. Wellman, you're perfectly right. I'm sure Dr. and Mrs. Hall would like to see my work. Yes, I think we wasn't trying to hurry you, Mrs. Whitney. Oh, you were but... too, Clarence. The trouble with you is, when you see people relaxing, you've got to recall them to some stern duty. You're a Puritan. Ease up, son. The Indians have gone and the colony is saved. <laughs> <laughs> For once, I find myself in agreement with Mr. Wellman. I, I think we shouldn't take any more of our hostess's time. Oh, very well, Doctor. Uh, my studio's through here. It used to be the grand ballroom in my grandfather's day. Much of grandfather would approve of clay on the floor and marble chips all over a room in which he entertained the governor and two presidents. But as Mr. Merriweather is probably about to say, every generation must do it. It's chiseling in its own way. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good, Doctor. <laughs> Let's assume that I did say that. <laughs> Well, where's the masterpiece, ma'am? I'm simply dying to see it. This will be a great day for Ivy College, I'm sure. Well, we'll see, Mr. Wellman. Uh, will you please take hold of that side of this canvas? Oh, yes. yes, now then. Now, just, just twitch it back. Now, that's it. Well, it's... Uh, it's breathtaking, isn't it? Simply uh, breathtaking. Uh, well, what, what sweep? Oh, what scope, huh? I never imagined any such... Mr. Merriweather? You don't look at me, ma'am. <laughs> I'm a little dumbfounded. Frankly, my education didn't prepare me for modern sculpture. Certainly a powerful piece, I'll say that for it. It's uh, probably wonderful, if I understood it. How about you, Mrs. Hall? I am a little unprepared, too, Mrs. Whitney. I don't feel that I have much of a right to express an artistic opinion of it. The meaning of it escapes me. And you're much too intelligent not to have given it a meaning. Thank you, my dear. Dr. Hall? Well, Doctor, don't you think it's an amazing piece of work? Uh, yes, yes, I, I certainly do, Mr. Wellman. But I... Uh, that, that's it, I guess, Mrs. Whitney. I think college is most grateful to you for uh, this. Uh, and, and for your generous offer to complete the new gymnasium. Uh, the, the Board of Governors will... Excuse me, Mr. Wellman. I don't think Dr. Hall had finished. Had you, William? No, I hadn't. Well, what's your verdict, Doctor? You're the foreman of the jury, as far as I'm concerned. What could his verdict possibly be, except that this fact... Pipe down, Clarence. You're pressing. <laughs> uh, doctor? 
Well, my knowledge of art is limited, but I was taught such things as line, form, composition, color, and balance. For me to judge this, this rather tremendous piece of work would be presumptuous. Mrs. Whitney, your technical proficiency is beyond question. Your reputation is secure. Your admirers are legion. Your generosity deeply appreciated. But in all honesty, I must vote no. Dr. Hall, do you realize what this Please. means to Ivy Cook? Mr. Wellman. What good heavens is the man so blind? Clarence, the lady told you to shut up. <laughs> you do understand, Doctor, that I'm tremendously proud of this work. Oh, oh madam, were, were I capable of producing anything one-tenth as impressive... I should be equally proud. Then what, Doctor? And uh, you do know, Doctor, that I had intended to provide funds for the new gymnasium upon the acceptance of this statue. Yes, I, I know that. But I cannot give my approval. Why not, Doctor? Tell them, William. I feel that this piece of sculpture, heroic in size and expert in execution, is completely out of key with the architectural scheme of Ivy College. Well, oh, believe me, I... I don't pass this Olympian judgment lightly, but I cannot be so false to my own conception of what is right for the beauty of the campus as to approve something that doesn't appear to me to harmonize in any way with its established design. I, I hope you won't consider this an abuse of either your generosity or your hospitality, Mrs. Whitney. It certainly is. I never heard such quick... Gentlemen! Gentlemen! The offer of this sculpture is withdrawn. We thank you anyway, ma'am. But I'll still build you a gymnasium. Oh, Tony. Any college with a president who has the courage to risk his position to maintain his beliefs... Well, I'm proud to be an alumna, Doctor. I wish you'd been here when I was a student. Thank you. Oh, Mrs. Whitney, you are a love. Hello, Clarence. <laughs> Uh, this is, uh, is extremely kind of you, Mrs. Whitney, uh, particularly in view of Dr. Hall's obstinacy. It was because of his obstinacy, Clarence. Can't you get that through your head? William, what are you smiling at? <laughs> I was thinking of the Tower of London, Vicky. The Tower of London, Doctor? <laughs> is that uh, apropos of something? Well, it is, somewhat. There's a ceremony at the Tower of London, the ceremony of the key. It's no secret to my wife that I hold fast to certain kinds of tradition, the kind that are significant of courage and grace and character. Every man, I suppose, has his own ceremony of the keys, and to hand them on, shining and bright, is one of the... Oh, dear me, I, I'm sorry. Am I moralizing again? Yes, Toddy, and don't stop, ever. <laughs> Curious. I tasted it. Now I know why Schlitz is the largest selling beer in America. No wonder it's the beer that made Milwaukee famous. And here again are Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Colvin. Good night, everyone. Good night. Be sure to see Ronald Coleman's latest picture, Champagne for Caesar. We'll be seeing you next week at this time at the Halls of Ivy, starring Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman. The other players were Paula Winslow, Herb Butterfield, Gail Gordon, Jerry Hausner, Raymond Lawrence, and Harry Martin. Tonight's script was written by Don Quinn and Hector Shevney. Our music was composed and conducted by Henry Russell. The Halls of Ivy was created by Don Quinn, directed by Nat Wolfe, and presented by the Joseph Schlitz Brewing Company, of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Ken Carpenter speaking.
for the big wedding. Stay tuned now to The Great Gildersleeve on NBC.